Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I want to share with you today some storybook style coloring, light, fresh, childlike, and it uses some of my favorite things, stamps, and products. I'm going to color it with my Prismacolor pencils, and I could have done the sky with them, but I opted to do some Copic Airbrush because that was a lot of sky to cover. So I've stamped everything on a 4x4 piece of Nina with my my favorite things hybrid natural colored ink so it'll keep it really soft and I've masked everything out using some post-it tape this is removable labeling tape it's two inches wide you can stamp on it and then trim the images out glue them down super easy I'm masking off the areas I don't want the airbrushing to go on and I've got this uh, all ready to go I've got my Copic marker ready this is a BG05 and I'll put it into the air grip from Copic. This is attached to underneath my desk, my air compressor. You could also use a can of air. And at the end of this video, there's going to be a video linking you to my getting started guide. So if you want to get into Copic Airbrush, it'll tell you all about the equipment you might need to get. I'm holding my air grip high up, and that's because I want a really soft coat. The closer your air gun gets to the paper, you're going to get a really strong little blop of color like on my little test piece down there at the bottom. So you want it nice and high up so you can go over it a couple times and try to get some even color. It does take some practice, so I would suggest taking some practice paper and trying to see what it takes to get some even coverage. But this worked out really well for the look that I wanted because I wanted just a nice plain blue sky, something really simple and bright. Now you can see my masking wasn't perfect, whether it was my trimming that didn't cut out quite right, or if some of the air got underneath of the edges if I didn't have them pressed down perfectly. But I can go in with my pencil, and this is a Prismacolor number 905, that seemed to match it pretty perfectly. So I was able to disguise that and go around each of my areas that didn't quite work perfectly. And I think it was my trimming by what I was looking at here, that my trimming wasn't right on. But it was easy, easy, easy to fix and fill in all those areas. Now let me talk about my sharpener before we get on. There's another video that I'll link you to. This sucker has an auto stop, which is really important, and it also gets it really sharp. Lots of people wonder how I get them really sharp. And there's a link to the video at the end as well as in the description down below if you need to get that sharpener because it's amazing. And now it's time to do the color pencil coloring. I'm gonna start with a yellow balloon because lots of my artwork has yellow in it. It's my favorite color. And I'm using a yellow and two orangey yellow types of colors. If I were trying to make this balloon look really realistic, I might have gone for a violet or a blue violet type of color because that's the complementary color to yellow. But since I wanted it to be really fresh and bright and childlike, I just stayed with colors that are very similar because it's gonna give me that really soft, bright, childlike look. You can see that my pencil is very sharp, and I'm going back and forth over each of the areas to try to fill in those white spots. There's little tiny white dots because of the texture of the Nina cardstock that I'm using, and depending on what paper you are using, you will have more or less of those little white areas. Some papers will have a grain in them, so you'll have little stripey type of areas, and at least the Nina, it's not a real regular pattern that you get, so it's really a, a good paper I find to work on. This and Bristol's are some of my favorites. So I'm going back and forth with the different colors and I'm trying not to get waxy. I want it really light layers because the light layers allow you to keep adding more layers to it and filling in those little spots. If you picture like looking really microscopically at a piece of paper and it has all those raised areas, it's got a real texture to it, and the raised areas is where the pencil goes across when you just move it across the paper. If you have it really sharp, you can get that pencil down into the little nooks and crannies that are in that paper texture. And it helps it to look a little smoother. If you get very waxy with it too soon, then you'll end up with your pencil not being able to get down into it because it's got a wax buildup and it won't allow your pencil down into those cracks. So I colored the faces and the little little claws, little hands, little feet with some pink and then I'm adding some brown to it for shading. Now I could have used just a pink for shading but I wanted to start making those lines that I had stamped disappear a little bit, just ever so slightly. So I'm, I picked a color that matches that ink pretty well 
when I color with it really light because it allows me to make the eyeballs darker because if I color heavy with it, then the brown gets darker. So whatever color you're stamping in, you can find a pencil that has that variability. So if you color with it lightly, it will make the, the little lines disappear. Now here's a place where I added a little more pink on the face because I wanted to bring back more of that pink color because it got too brown. But since I'm doing light layers, it's possible to recover those kinds of things. To disguise those stamp lines all the way around the edges, I'm just going to go and add very, very light brown all the way around the entire sheet. And it's going to make him look all poofy, as well as give him a little bit of depth. I'm going to have some of the brown around all sides of the image because he's white and I want to disguise all of those lines, but I can have it a little heavier on one side or another to make it look like there's a little shading. But really my shading is all from the top center. I'm not really worrying about a left source, left light source, right light source, none of that in this one because it's just a simple, simple sheep image. And I'm trying to just go for cute, not for realistic here. Because what's the realism of two sheep exchanging balloons and hearts, right? <laughs> That's not not in the realm of realistic. But you can see how the the development of this goes and, and I just keep getting softer and softer as I get toward the inside of the sheep, heavier lines to the outside so that I get a little bit of depth and not a whole lot, but keep it really soft. Now the ground, I could have masked out again and done some airbrushing in that. I was like, ah, I don't feel like messing with that. So I had it super light green, just a tiny hair of green to the hillside. And adding a strong green would make the sheep pop out more, but I wasn't really too worried about that because I was just going to add some shading underneath of them to increase the fact that they are standing. If you look at shadows outside in the world around you, you'll start to see that if you look at an object from the side, like we're looking at these sheep from the side, the shadows under them, they're not sheep shaped, they're generally just like a flat oval that almost comes to a point on either side. So that's a really easy way to make a simple shadow under something. So I was messing around with how much green I wanted to add or not add or what directions, and I wasn't really pleased with some of that. So I got out my Prismacolor kneaded eraser. I've had this thing for 20 years, all you have to do is stretch it and it cleans, it's kind of self-cleaning I guess. And you can also make a little point out of it. So I almost make a pencil point out of my eraser so I can go in and either very lightly buff over some areas that I want to lighten. If your sheep doesn't come out like with a really smooth blend, you can lighten some of that really easily with that pencil. So then I wanted to add my sentiment and I wanted the will you be mine with just the word you, E-W-E, -E, to be onto the balloon. So I've put it in my Misty, and I'm masking out either side of the sentiment. So I just get the E-W-E, -E. and then I have to slide it over a little bit. Now my, my stamp has ink on it, I don't want to make a mess on it <laughs> and get it all over my paper. So I've just put the plastic from the stamp set onto the, the image, and then I can slide it over very, exactly where I want it, close the misty up and then open it back up and it picks up the stamp and then I can remove my plastic and I can move my little post-it notes to block off the area that I don't want to have stamped. So get it lined up just perfect and then I can stamp the wool on the left. And press it down and bada boom, bada bing. And then I'll just do the same thing on the opposite side and get the will you be mine sentiment ready. So I've got it on the plastic again so that I can see through what I'm doing. Remove the plastic and add my little mask. And one of the great things too about using the airbrush and the colored pencil together, only the word you is going over top of colored pencil. It's hard to stamp sometimes on pencil, but it's really easy to stamp on the Copic airbrush background. So I was only fighting a little bit with trying to get the you to make sure it it worked perfectly. I've die cut this with a really fun die, which is also linked in the description down below and on my blog from my favorite things, and popped it onto a yellow card base because I wanted to emphasize that yellow on the balloon. I've got a few more videos for you here with colored pencil if you're interested. There's a video on the right hand side that you can click on to get more on the pencil sharpener that I talked about and my pencil storage. Doing some quick tip videos over on my second channel with little quick questions that people have. 
You can subscribe for more videos. You can find me all over the web as Sandy Almock on Instagram and Periscope and whatnot. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.